Uh oh, by yourself today. By myself today. You must have done some good this week. It's been a good week. Well, but no, nah, she's she's home watching the kids, so. That's probably more work than being on the truck. Yeah, she told me we could swap days, and I was like, nah, <laughs> I got this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Well, I know uh, last week we showed the 4.0, and a couple of people talked about how they was demoing it and liked it. One guy said he liked it, but he's having trouble keeping the dongle connected to it. So, so I, If I was him on that issue, I'd get with my dealer and see because um, that's the first I've heard of it. I actually used it of mine this weekend. I had two or three cars that I needed to work on and it worked perfect. And I actually, the car that I was working on was an airbag light and it would come on and you could clear it, but it would take 30, 40 minutes of driving for it to come back on. So I actually hooked it up, went in the house, started watching TV, forgot about it. And two hours later, I went out there and it was still reading all the data and everything else. So, yeah. I mean, it, there's always the possibility that something could have happened or something like that. I mean, but uh, that's the first time I've heard it, but something could be wrong with that dongle or something. Yeah. Just reach out to the dealer and see. Um, but, yeah, I was really impressed with it myself this weekend. I really like the ease of it. Um, it made doing the airbag stuff really easy, uh, so which I got, you know, got to play with some of the new features and stuff like that. I was really hoping to get to use the scope, but it didn't present itself, so I wouldn't want to just start playing around with it for the fun of it. But uh, I'll get to eventually. So, but well, it looks like you got something new sitting up there. Yeah, I set that out before I come in there. That way, I wouldn't forget what I wanted to show because I have been forgetful this week, but. This is a new intelligence sense that we that I've got at Expo. I don't know how long we've had it out or anything like that because it don't have it don't have new beside it in the e catalog or anything. So we probably had it for a little while. But the reason I'm bringing it out now is because down here in the south we're going into summer and it's getting time for AC work. Yep. And I'm hearing more and more about. Um, I've got a couple of shops that's kind of afraid to go to the new refrigerant and the reason they're afraid to go to the new refrigerant is because it's so high mm -hmm. you know if i fill it up and i don't know that there's a leak you know on the 134 you think you got it fixed you think you found the leak you fill it up you send them on if it comes back oh well we'll fill it back up find where it leaks at you know put dye in it i've heard that a lot mm -hmm. diagnosing ac leaks well here let me fill it up and put some dye in it when you come back if it's got a leak it'll have the dye showing up well, the new refrigerant's kind of high, and most yep. people don't want to pay to fill it up, and if it leaks out, come back. Mm -hmm. That's where these are going to come more and more in common. Uh, they've been around forever, um, but the early models would really make you not even want to use them because they would pick up almost anything. I mean, they would pick up the silicone and everything else. This one here has a couple different levels, high, medium, and low, to try to avoid that, so they're, they're, they're getting past that. You know, if you cut it on a different level you're not going to pick up the certain stuff it's to help eliminate those false positives on that leak um but also on the new refrigerant when you're looking for the leak you don't have to fill it completely up get it just enough to to get some in it where the compressor will come mm -hmm. on start sniffing it right away find a leak evac it right away which is probably technically how you're supposed to do it anyway for the environmental standards but either way um fix it do it again repeat okay now i don't i'm not smelling it here we're good to go right so i think this is something that's going to become more and more common uh i've actually got a couple of my shops that was leery of doing it to actually start they bought some gauges and they've actually started filling up the new refrigerant by using these been doing it for a little while now hadn't had any problems so uh, i think that's going to be the more common way mm -hmm. which I know some of the AC machines now have leak detection on them too, but that's not a flu, you know, nothing's foolproof, but that's not foolproof either. I mean, it may tell you there's a leak, but where's the leak at? Right. Like it's, I know it's a leak, it's, it's run down, mm -hmm. you know, but is it at the fill port or is it in the condenser? Is it, where's it at, you know? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes when they're- Always an O-ring. Every time, every yeah. time it's always well O-ring or <laughs> behind that comp the uh, the compressors. Yeah. Um, depending on the model, some of them leak where they put them together. Some of them leak behind the clutch. But also, I've noticed 
that it's always in the hardest place to get to. Like if every time, if if the firewall where they go into the firewall, if it's hard to get to and you got to stand on your head to get to it, that's where it's leaking at. Mm. Like don't even look anywhere else. Just go there. Um, but also, it just takes out some time. I know uh, looking for dice pretty easy. You just take the light, shine it. Some say you got to wear glasses. I never had to wear the glasses. Mm. It glows, but. Uh, and, and find it, but that's usually when it's been leaking for a while, and right. when the stuff was four or five dollars a can, not twenty, thirty, forty bucks a can. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my shop owners told me he was paying fifty for a can. And I said, hey, you know, I'll find something different. But and we're talking about the little bitty cans, but so I wanted to show that off. But so I always buy the AC die and just the the actual die itself and inject it, inject it in. Yeah. But I well, know. and I've never yeah. used the aerosol type. Well, and. And I've used both. I've had it to where it's mixed in the refrigerant, and I've had it where it's uh, where I inject it with an AC machine. Um, of course, the AC, the AC machine is easier. You just hit a button and tell it to go. But um, there's a lot of people now that's trying to get away from an AC machine for whatever reason. I guess because they're more expensive. See, um, I, I guess I'm a little backwards. You know, I, I do things kind of a keep it simple, stupid yeah. kind of rule. That's the way I like to live. If I got one that comes in, like Kevin Bayless brought his car in last week, didn't know where the leak was at. He brought it in, it didn't have no refrigerant in it. So I'm like, you got a leak. He's like, well, we'll fill it up and figure it out. And I said, yeah, we'll fill it up. We're gonna fill it up with shop air. Yeah, I'll, I'll I put so. I put my shop air on there and we sprayed it and sure enough, guess where it was leaking? It's always an O-ring. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that done too. Um, I've seen that done a couple of times on a dealership level. Um, of course, Toyota never liked it. You know, mm -hmm. they would argue with you. Uh, moisture, water in the air. I always just pull a long vac in yeah. as soon as I get done with it. And I hadn't had any trouble. It may blow the next compressor plumb <laughs> through the hood. It may go through the radiator, everything. I don't yeah. know. But I have not had a minute's trouble with that. Yeah. Like on a big truck. Man, it's so hard, especially when it goes to the rear air, you know, if yeah. they got a rear expansion valve and all that. Man, you put 150 PSI to that thing yeah. and spray it, soap bubbles will come up the size of a softball. <laughs> it's really easy to find. Well, that's like uh, when my sister had a water leak in her house and her pipes go into the foundation, like it's concrete foundation. Yeah. And the only reason we knew she had a leak was because the carpet stuff was getting wet in two different rooms. So it's like, okay, well, what room is it leaking in? But the original reason we knew is because the water was running out from outside. It was puddling up outside. So I got to looking on the internet, of how do you find a leak in a foundation? I know they don't just tear the two rooms up and that's what they did, or that's what one of the, the companies did. They added air to the pipes and they mm -hmm. said, look, you, know, you can't put 400 PSI to this, yeah. you know, put 100, 125 PSI and they listen for the, the, you know, where the air is coming up and stuff like that. So that's what we did and it, it actually helped us find it. So, um, same difference, you know, you, they say don't run air through PVC too because it can, mm -hmm. it, it don't crack, it shatters, but, um. Man, I know a lot of shops has got PVC air lines, I, a I, bunch I of do, them. I do too. I do too. I don't, uh, but I know there's a lot. And yeah. I know a lot of shops is using PECs now. Yeah. Airlines. Well, and I've seen newer shops built with that from the get-go, and that's what the contractor puts in there. So I don't know if PECs is different than PVC, but I know they, they used to scream, don't do not do that, because PVC, when it when it breaks, it usually shatters. It, mm -hmm. don't, it don't crack or whatever. But, yeah. So that's one of the things I was going to show. This, this online uh, in the macro catalog, runs for 349 so if you're doing a whole lot of AC work this is something to look at right. there um, just because speed, speed thing it up and I know most people's gonna be hesitant because of the false positives and stuff like that but it was kind of cool at Expo the guy had a couple of different silicones and stuff and mm -hmm. he was showing and it wasn't picking up on them so that was kind of cool well I actually bought a AC sniffer I bought the OTC and uh yeah, it's kind of hit or miss, which has been probably four years since I bought it. Well, see, and that, that's the and thing. And I know they've changed a lot. Yeah, a then. lot of the ones, especially that far back, they didn't do, they wouldn't, they didn't know nothing about the new refrigerant or anything else. That one meets the, uh, all the specs of the new refrigerant and stuff. But um, about eight years ago, when I first started, they put one of those things in my hand and said, hey, you find the AC leak. 
and you could go anywhere from the front bumper to the back bumper to the next car over and it was picking crap mm -hmm. up so it, it was like well this ain't really helping me at all so you found ways to spray water or do whatever you that's had to what, do that's what i was gonna say it's hard to beat them soap bubbles man. yeah it, it's it, hard it, to beat soap bubbles you just found what you just did what you could do so the simpler um, it is the better it works yeah seems like. which those work good when it's like in the even in, in the heater box and stuff you can just oh yeah it's, it's smelling in here which normally if it's in there you can smell it coming out of the vent so yeah. Those are a couple of different ways, but then they also come out with this new light here. Uh, it's a 50 watt, and it's a Bluetooth speaker too, because everybody likes music. So it's a oh, yeah, it's a light cool. and a speaker. We'll pull it out, look at it right quick. That's pretty neat. Have you jams and a light That's all in it. one. Well, and I like that it's a bigger light too. So you can sit it on the floor, point it up, do whatever you gotta do. 400, uh, 4,000 lumens is the max. So I'm not gonna cut it on and blind you, but you can see it's got the speakers on the side. That's pretty cool. Right got a there. big old button right here. Got a actual um, music button there. It's got an input and output here. How long is the battery supposed to last on that? Well, it's gonna be let's see, 400 lumens. You'd be 20 hours. A thousand lumens. You'd be 10 hours. Two thousand six hours. Four thousand three hours. But I'm almost going to bet you this thing will run on the charger too. I haven't tried that, but that's almost. pretty good though. Really, three hours for as bright as that is. Yeah, four thousand yeah. lumens. I know some lights that I've sold in the past and wow, that I've bought in the past. Yeah, it is. Um, you're talking about like a thousand lumens, and they run in an hour, hour and a half, two hours. So mm -hmm. the fact that this one can run four thousand lumens for three hours is pretty impressive to me. Because you're not going to have it on. Well. I say you're not. You might have it on for three hours consecutive, but usually any light's gonna go dead by then. Besides yeah. the old plug install, it's always know. tripping over the cord yeah. and knocking it over. So pretty, pretty good light. I mean, it Bluetooth, all that. That's just more reason for me to buy it if I can listen to music on it too, right? I know. Well, what does what does that light run? Let me look it up. Let's see, that's a cool light. A really cool light. Yeah, it looks like it's got a 140 degree uh, vertical rotation, so it gives you a good little. It's water and dust resistant. That's cool. So on uh, Maco catalog, it runs 3.99, but dealers may be having a sale on it. To get past kind of the pricing issue, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't have my computer pulled up on my uh, stuff now. So if they go online, that's what they're finding it for. So I should be able to tell you that price, right? Yeah. See, I thought about that the other day. I was like, I should just be able to, <laughs> you know, there's a Mac up online. If we give them the part number, so there you go. Man, I know we've give part numbers before and people still, hey, what's the part number? I know, I, I know. Think some people just want you to type it out because they don't want to have to go back and listen and write it down or something, but. Well, and and I got to, you know, somebody commented, you know, just give us a price so we'll have a ballpark. But, you know, nobody wants, it's hard for other dealers to compete with my deals because they might not got them on the same deal or they might not have the same idea, you know. Yeah. So I've decided that I'll just pull up Maco's online catalog and give the price that they give right there you go so and if your dealer's got it cheaper you'll feel like you got a bargain there you go <laughs> and if he's higher then you'd be like hey man that's too high and get it online for there so you go. i mean fixes everything but yep which we, we showed the four we've showed the flex before i've got that sold um but that's another if, if i've seen a lot of comments to where it was like yeah that's a great scanner but that's a lot for me to spend because I just do it on the side or a hobby or whatever. Look at one of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get one of those. If you don't fully unlock it, you can get it stupid cheap, you know. So, you know, Max Flex, look at it. And then we have some other smaller scanners too. So don't think you can't have a Maco scanner just because. Right. Um, so that's another option too. So. There you go. Easy enough. All right, guys, well, we actually got to go in here and get some work done today, which sucks because it's Friday. I don't like working on Friday, but it is what it is today. So Have you a guys, good fourth. 
you guys have a good 4th of July weekend. And like always, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Those are free. Don't cost you nothing. It ain't like shopping on a Matco truck. They're free. And you can click this merchandise over here. Cool tools and discount codes in the description. If you're not subscribed, take your finger, mash that button. You guys have a great week. And we will catch you next time. See ya.